My name is Philbert Smith. I'm at Eagle Rock School in Estes Park, Colorado, and I'm here with my friend, colleague, Ike Leslie. How do you think we are at this school? I know that we have a lot of freedom to talk about race, gender, and equity issues, and we do an adequate job, but are we taking enough risk? I mean, Eagle Rock is a really unique place. We have students from all over the country. We have staff from all over the country with very diverse backgrounds, with different ideas, opinions. And it's sort of the ultimate test to me in community building is how do you take all of these different people, isolate them in the mountain wilderness in an intentional community and say, hey, get along. Eagle Rock poses a huge challenge for all of us, especially because it's such a transient community. Mm -hmm. I mean, students and some staff come and go every trimester, every couple of months. And so even when you make progress on these issues, it's a constant remaking. It's a constant revisiting of difficult issues that take a long time to wrap your head around in the first place. So I think we have a big challenge here, as I think there's a challenge everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think Eagle Rock is special because we have an administration and we have students and staff who, by and large, want to tackle these issues. But I think the reality of the situation is most people here don't know how or there's not the place for it or that there's such big issues and that people are they're so close to home for so many people that it's difficult to engage those issues at the level I think we need to. I can identify with that because we do have a very open environment where we talk about those issues openly. And we're probably more open than a lot of school environments that would allow such things to come up. But I also believe that we get a little bit too comfortable at times around here. And we don't take the courage to challenge ourselves more and push the envelope a little bit more and to challenge each other about those issues. And to do that through the vehicle of music, I think, is great. One of our biggest challenges is finding a platform to discuss these issues. Mm -hmm. And so my platform is my music classes. Okay. And I think... Music offers a really special opportunity to discuss these issues and to mm -hmm. engage in these issues. Because at first glance, like, hey, we're, we're getting together. We're going to talk about some, some blues. We're going to talk about some mm -hmm. jazz music. Or we're going to talk about the roots of that rock and roll I heard you playing in your wing the other night. Oh, wait, but who is playing that music? Right. Where is that coming from? When did that happen? Why were they playing that music? Mm -hmm. What do those lyrics really mean? Okay. Music is an entry point that can pull people in because it's engaging and because it's personal and because at first glance, I'm not saying, hey, we need to get together and talk about race right now. There's a student that you are aware of named Hector. He's from California. He's involved in gangs and that type of lifestyle. One day I saw him out on the Esplanade. He had a trumpet in his hand. And he was talking about going to practice uh, some Miles Davis. And I looked at him, and that caught my attention first. Hector <laughs> has a trumpet and is talking about going to practice some piece by Miles Davis. Then he brought up this artist, Ornette Coleman. I don't know adolescents who know about Ornette Coleman. And that Ike was one of the things that really sparked me to really take a real close look at you because I knew then if you could inspire Hector to practice the trumpet and then for some reason, somewhere in your class, you talked about Ornette Coleman and he had some basic knowledge of Ornette Coleman that something different was going on and that you were the impetus behind all of this. It's cool that you bring up Ornette Coleman because that was part of a lesson about 
the dichotomy, quote unquote, between freedom and structure Mm -hmm. in jazz music. Uh, That was part of a class uh, I taught my first trimester here called All That Jazz. It was a jazz history course. Mm -hmm. And I think that course really helped me realize that I can translate my feelings about how I can use music to connect with people I don't know to Mm -hmm. a classroom setting. Okay. And it was in that course, I used that course as an impetus to talk about social issues that we think might be bigger than music making or just playing the riffs or music theory. Mm -hmm. We had a week dedicated to women instrumentalists in jazz. Okay. We had time dedicated to queer instrumentalists and vocalists in jazz music, Mm -hmm. to the civil rights movements. Is there a time where maybe a student really resisted I can't ever recall a student of mine really resisting a difficult conversation about race, class, gender, or sexual orientation in one of my classes on music. I can't remember a single time. I think part of that reason is that we have students who live these issues, and I think young people really want to engage with these issues because whether or not they talk about it, they're thinking about it. They're smart. They know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I think more often than not, in my case, once I create the platform, students take it and run. We've talked about this being a small community of non-trained musicians. And you've done a lot to help push this community for and help push students for it because I've seen them perform. So what about the Berkeley connection and all of these other initiatives that you have? I'm glad you brought that up. So as of this last summer, Eagle Rock is Berkeley College of Music in Boston, their newest partner high school. Mm -hmm. We're part of what's called the Berkeley City Music Network. Okay. And Berkeley City Music Network has a similar vision to Eagle Rock about which students we choose to engage and how we wish to engage them. Berkeley focuses almost exclusively on contemporary musics and popular musics. Okay. So as a Berkeley member site, we use contemporary music, we use diverse musics, to teach music, music theory, performance, etc., but also to teach social skills, goal setting, commitment, and what that means. Beginning in January of 2012, it would be 40 years that I work with adolescents and, and, and young people. And I am amused and frustrated by the adolescent mind and what they could do. And it is so intriguing and interesting to me I want to continue to find new ways to challenge them and to spark them to be the best person that they can be inside. And and that exploration takes you a lot of places. There's a lot of things that have happened since I began in 1972. We've had uh, AIDS. We got, you know, a lot of increase in homelessness, homelessness. We got a lot of more increase in family violence, um, drugs, and the sexualization of females, a young female. All of these forces have impact upon adolescence, and to be able to talk to a young person and help guide them through that tumultuous period of time in their life is just something that intrigues me. So what about Eagle Rock? Do those issues show up here? They do show up here. They show up here every day. (laughs) They show up here in the students that we have on campus. 
I see them as I go out and interview students. They show up all over. It's amazing how many um, young women are sexually uh, assaulted. It's amazing how students who identify uh, their sexuality uh, differently, let's say, from the, from the main course of a society, how they feel oppressed within schools or within their communities or within their own families. It's amazing how an introverted student can feel oppressed and bullied within a school or within a community, how kids feel threatened within their neighborhoods and, and are unsafe. And to be able to offer a percentage of those young people an opportunity to come here at this school is great. But is there a particular student you can think of who has maybe faced some of those issues uh, back home? And maybe without mentioning their full name. Yes, there, there are several students that come to mind. Um, there's a young man right now who um, came from a background where he used a lot of drugs, a very dysfunctional family, and right now he's on a journey circumnavigating the Americas in a sailboat by himself. Uh, there's the young man that was in the L.A. gang scene and now he's doing something for California Conservation Corps. There's the young woman who was unsure about herself, and she's now and had uh, made suicidal attempts and things like that, and was depressed. And she's now a social worker and a mother. And there are hundreds of stories here <laughs> at the school of young people who was given the opportunity. And it's just great to be a part of that. And focusing maybe on one of those examples, what is what worked and what changed? The... I think what changed or what worked is the improv improvisation that we were talking about before because it was each one of those individuals. It wasn't a set set of strategies. It was being able to make adjustments during their time here. And this community, the constant was the support and the freedom that we had to make those adjustments and to embrace that student and support them, but also to challenge them to do better and, and to challenge them that they're that their past did not have to determine their future.